Hello. Let's see, for this video, I'm going to try to keep it pretty brief. Um, you've already seen the title. You already know what it's about. Um, not a lot more that I can say that hasn't already been said. Um, but there's two main points to this camera. That camera is this. Uh, here it is in the case. This would be the Contacts T2 in all its glory. Back, top, if you can see the top. Now, of course, when you open it, you have that wonderful automatic lens coming out. I try to keep this to a minimum as far as playing around with it, mainly because as well as these cameras are built, it's my understanding that basically they're not repairable or not repairable by anybody I've seen. But anyway, that's another point. Two main points with this camera and we'll get out of your way or I shall get out of your way. Number one, it is as good as people say it is. It just is. It's an amazing camera. Um, I have rarely, if ever, missed a shot out of this camera. I point it, compose it. But one of the things I do like about it is unlike I, I did put it some while ago. I meant to do this one sooner. I did a Konica C35 AF2 about a year ago. And um, I, not jokingly, I do compare these cameras. Uh, but one of the big things that wins out with this camera over that one is that this camera has focus and recompose. Uh, the Konica C35 AF2, uh, if it has to be in center of frame. Once you pr it focuses on whatever is in the center of the frame when you press the shutter. Where this one, this camera, you have a couple of options, and there's no auto focus. There's no manual focus option on that camera. This camera, you have two options. You can focus manually with the dial on the top with a distance, and then it'll give you focus confirmation in a viewfinder. Is one way. Or if you leave it in AF and you focus and then recompose. Those are the two options, so that's nice. Um, but and well, another thing about it is the focus is the actually the exposure compensation, which is not available on the C35 AF2 either. But you know, you can set film speed differently if you want to do it that way. But number one, like I said, it is as good as people say it is. It just is, and of course, has a Zeiss lens, fantastic. Um, I'll have a link to a review, and I'll also put a link to the sample images for this camera. Number two, is it worth the current asking price? For me, no, it's not. Um, I bought this camera some years ago. It was not inexpensive, I can't say cheap. I won't say it was expensive because it was a good value at the time. But if you ask me would I buy this camera today at the current price, the answer is probably no. There are too many other good cameras on the market that I would buy instead. I would probably be happy to, to quote unquote settle with a Contax G1. Um, that of course doesn't have a flash built in, but I rarely have ever used a flash on this camera. I've literally only used a flash on this camera just to test that the flash works. The other thing is that camera is larger, true. But you do gain the advantage of an interchangeable lens system. Um, and there is a very good lens that's comparable to this for that. I currently keep, I think it's the 28. I apologize if I'm getting the focal range long, wrong. Um, I do keep that lens on it most of the time. I think it's the 24 to 28 millimeter. Can't remember off the top of my head. F2.8, excellent lens. Um, another excellent lens for that camera is the 45 F2. That's reason right there enough to look at a G system camera over a Contax T2, if you can get on with the size and the lack of flash. That 45 F2 is phenomenal. I don't have it currently because I have that focal length covered at length elsewhere. Um, and also there's a very affordable 90 millimeter F2.8, which is an excellent lens. A lot of people disparage it, but it doesn't really focus as badly as the reviews would lead you to believe. Is it slower? Yes. Um, would it benefit probably from the G2 and it's f slightly faster autofocusing probably but I get on along I get on just fine with the G1 and the 90 millimeter f2.8 so that's it um, those are the two main points 
it is as good as people say it is. It does feel as good in hand as people say it does. It's a very nice camera. But again, if you ask me would I spend the money today for this camera, I could not with a clear conscience recommend this camera unless you've just got it like that. Unless you just load it and you want to want to buy this camera. But there's plenty of other point and shoot cameras on the market that I will not say are as good, but I cannot say are worth this camera's worth the premium over those uh, many options out there. Uh, that's about it. I'll close here. Again, I'll put a link to my full review at the bottom in the comment section. And I will also link to a gallery I keep in Flickr for this camera so you can look at that. Uh, that's about it. Thank you very much. Good night.